This is Otaku Station, broadcasting anime analysis to anyone who will listen. We have a basement archive full of an ever-growing collection of anime media. We dig deep into the great anime of the past to give you the context you need to fully appreciate the best this medium has to offer. Let's jam. Welcome to the broadcast. I hope you're having a good day wherever you happen to be right now. This is Otaku Station, where today we'll be talking about episode one of Revolutionary Girl Utena, a very unusual shoujo series. It has some magical girl elements to it uh, and quite influential. Boy, it's going to have a lot to talk about here about this one because it's out there. Um, here in the tower, uh, I'm continuing to bring in guests. I have a guest here just for the day, a neat old guy named Victor. He's uh, kind of an explorer. He spends weeks or months out in the wilderness just exploring, um, collecting, gathering, and just kind of learning. Um, he's been on a real uh, seed gathering kick lately, so he's been talking a lot about the different seeds he finds out there. And it's got me thinking about maybe doing a garden. Like, it's just nice getting your hands out in the dirt sometimes and, you know, um, making something live on your own. Um, anyway, uh, back to the anime. I know that's what you're all here for. Uh, Utna is quite a weird show, and I don't mean that in a pejorative sense. It is very out there and very intentionally so. So let's go behind the scenes and down into the research room to get some context on this show. Welcome behind the scenes of Revolutionary Girl Utena. Now, this anime was directed by Kunahiko Ikuhara, a really remarkable director. He'd go on to direct such anime as Mawaru Penguin Drum, Yurikuma Arashi, and Sarazan Mai. Very out there kind of anime, a lot of symbolism uh, and a lot of unreality, which you're going to see a lot of here in Revolutionary Girl Utena. But at the time, he was just coming off of directing Sailor Moon, particularly the third season, I think, Sailor Moon S, which was very well received. And he wanted to make this um, uh, another shoujo anime. He apparently was not happy with the uh, relative lack of control he was given on Sailor Moon. So he got together a bunch of other people to spend six months planning out what would eventually become Revolutionary Girl Utna. And they had a number of different inspirations for that, uh, Ikuhara especially. One of the big ones would be the Takarazuka Review. Now, this has been around for over 100 years now in Japan. It is a musical theater company, but it is an all-female musical theater company. So the plays and musicals they put on are have male and female roles, but women play all of those roles. And so you can see where that would be kind of an inspiration there. Uh, and especially in the, not just the male versus female thing, but also the kind of theatrical rendering of Utna. A lot of the environments and situations feel kind of unreal, almost like it's being staged on a, on a, on a, on a stage. So I think you get that feel from the Takarazuka Review as well. Another big inspiration was a novel called Demian, or Demian by Hermann Hesse. Now, I've only read a bit of this novel so far, but from what I can tell, it's about the comparison of kind of innocent good versus the complexity of adulthood and, and the evil, potential evil of adulthood. So, you know, innocent children having this simple idea of, of, of good versus evil, and then adults being, there being a lot more going on than that, if you will. And that certainly is a big theme in Utna. Uh, two big manga and anime influences, though. One was Princess Knight by Osamu Tezuka, a well-known manga he drew about a um, girl who is born with both a girl heart and a boy heart in, uh, through a mistake in heaven. It's very much a fairy tale. So this princess is born with a girl heart and a boy heart, and the girl heart gets taken, so she grows up as a boy, and then, you know, fairy tale things happen, prince, um, evil duke, all that kind of fairy tale stuff. Um, so you can certainly see where that would be 
a, an influence there. But also I think the, one of the biggest ones would be The Rose of Versailles, originally a manga that an anime in the late 70s, hugely popular, hugely influential. Uh, and this is about a noble who gives birth to a girl uh, instead of a boy and decides to raise the girl as their son and eventually becomes the captain of the guard in the Marie Antoinette period of France, so kind of high court France. Now, I think Rosa Versailles is probably the biggest influence or has the most influences, if you will, because you have a girl who dresses like a boy and acts like a boy, if you will. Um, roses also, roses all over the place in Utna and roses all over the place in Rosa Versailles. Uh, also though, the specific military clothing of that period in France uh, seems to have a lot of parallels or does have a lot of like visual parallels to the uh, formal clothing in Utna. So when you see them in their epaulettes and that clothing, and it's, it's closer to Rosa Versailles than Princess Knight or to Karazuka Review in general. Um, but also I would say Rosa Versailles more directly kind of challenges gender roles. The gender flopping in Princess Knight is much more of a fairy tale plot device. Uh, the, the, the characters aren't trying to be something other than the you know, sexuality they were born with, right? The princess wants to be a girl, except when her boy heart is inserted. It's complicated. But fundamentally, Princess Knight is not trying to suggest that girls should not act like girls or boys should not act like boys. It's fairly gender essentialist in that sense. Um, Rosa Versailles instead is very much a girl can do all the things a captain of the guard can do as well as any uh, man can. So very interesting elements there and a lot more dealing with the men and women of the court because obviously gender roles very very strong in the court at Versailles so seeing that and then with this character in the middle who's kind of both and and neither um, more challenging of those those gender norms and so I think you can see more of that character Oscar in Utna than you can the characters in Princess Knight or Demian or some of the other ones so if you're interested in more about uh, Utna and where it might have come from Rosa Versailles is kind of the, the big place to go so that's my thoughts on that. Uh, those are the, the main things I would look at in terms of influences on Utna. Let's go back up to the tower. Welcome back. I hope you found that useful. Quick update on the situation with Victor. He, we talked for a while and I asked him if he'd be willing to part with some of his seeds. And he was willing to, but he wanted to trade it for some anime. And unfortunately, not just any anime uh eyes of mars now this is a very obscure anime uh at least you know uh these days it was made in the 1980s by i think a new age cult it's a sci-fi film sort of an action adventure film but it has a lot of new age concepts woven into it so really weird and man i don't know if i can part with it so now I've got that to worry about, but anyway, uh, let's get on to Utna. Before we begin, um, I will probably start referencing these characters' names before they're in even introduced because they're just so well known to me. So if you see a pink-haired girl, long pink-haired girl, that's Utna. And if you see a girl with purple hair, that's Anthe. So just be ready for those two characters. Again, I just, I know them so well. Just like, oh, that's, even if I hadn't seen Utna, I know who those characters were. So pink-haired girl, Utna purple-haired girl, Anthe. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get uh, Stephen John on to start analyzing episode one of Utna. All right, I think we've got both of you on the line. Signals are coming in well. Everything okay up there? Doing all right. You. We had a little touch of the plague, but we're all good. Okay, good, yeah. good. Got a few There's a lot of in crickets you. and cicadas back here, but we're doing okay. Okay, good. Better than the alternative, right? Yes. Yeah, at yes. least there's nature. All right, so let's get into Utena, episode one. Mm. Get ready for a ride. And singing. Lots of singing. singing. So I want to start wow. out here by calling out the um, tone of the opening song. It's very vibrant, very positive, but also like very, has a, a driving force um, that I don't know is 
that common in especially shoujo anime. Um, it has kind of a little more of a, like a uh, I don't know, like a rock feel to me okay. um, compared to other shoujo anime. It just kind of feels like a different vibe. I think we're getting a hint of the tone of the series with that. Just a wee bit. Perhaps. A wee bit. Utena is 95, I think. Uh, let me just check. Because um, that's CG, 97. Uh, hey. That's a little CG top there spinning. Yeah. Huh, interesting. So pretty early for that kind of CG. Cool. And also, given that it's so limited, it's not really pushing too hard. Sure, no. yeah. Mm-hmm. Smart use of that. I'm also assuming those are CGI characters. Uh, with all the, the shine on them. Sure, right. That's how they're yeah. achieving that. Okay. Wow. Heavy hmm. stylization. Yeah. All the That's zoot suits, really yes. Interesting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Wow, interesting. I did not expect that much stylization. Okay. Huh. Also, also the uniform. Oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. I was going to say the uniformity really makes Utna stand out. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, yeah. a bunch of cookie cutter people, sort of, you know, very <laughs> earth tone. And then pink curl, hair girl, <laughs> red shorts, red socks. Like, I think we know who we're supposed to be looking at here. Absolutely. 100%. And interestingly, here, not quite the same. Note that we have yeah. Utna, it's all boys behind her. Anthea, it's all girls. Um, and Anthea has the same outfit as all of them, so she's fitting in yeah. more. Yeah, I was going to say, her only difference is purple hair. Other than that, her outfit is like everyone else's. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Also, we should point out the washed-out color scheme here. Um, Mm. A lot of white, a lot of uh, black and, like, inky purples and blues in the backgrounds uh, here, even though they're clearly meant to represent spaces. But it's it's like... um, like a, a camera that's where the, the photographs have been heavily processed. Right. Like almost washed out. Very sketchy. And I don't mean sketchy yeah. weird. Mm-hmm. But I mean like um, that first impression kind yeah. of thing. Like you're, trying to, you're trying to do that. You're trying to throw the idea onto the surface as fast as you can. So it's sketched out quickly to give you the, the, the idea of the artist in it. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. Um, almost unreal. Almost a dreamlike quality. Hmm. Should also be pointed out, um, although this is not unusual, we've only got two characters so far, right? They're not focusing on anyone else. We're very much focusing on these two. The fact that they like to obviously lie down on public paths. Right. (laughs) As you do. As Uh, everyone else. Yeah. But more of the doe eyes at each other. So. Yeah. uh, Going stronger on that. Interesting. Roses. Roses, roses, roses. Giving a rose to someone else. Yeah, clearly a rose theme. A white rose of true love. Uh Uh-huh, indeed. Or the House of York, I think. Right, yeah, one of the two. Uh Interesting. So we're getting a sort of transformation sequence here. All right, that's a strong visual. Yes, it is. Interesting. I love the push-up to that. Very cool. Gotta call out this visual here. The ballistic motion. The fact that they have the character moving towards you, it's very expensive. Mm. It's a lot of animation. And to make that look correct with all of the um, three-dimensionality, that is very difficult. So <laughs> very uh, time-consuming to animate correctly. So good on them. All right. So clearly we're getting other characters in the show now. Yeah. Uh, definitely establishing a dueling theme. And here, Anthea is gone. It's just good interesting and it's udna transformed it's true because she has her epaulets yeah you're on. right interesting so okay Anthe is so okay. everyone's fighting over the other girl Anthe? yeah looks like it all right um and i'd say for the other where we start seeing more characters hmm. it seems that you've definitely set up two camps you have Anthe and udna Mm-hmm. And then, you know, we go through this entire thing until we get to the end, and now we suddenly see a bunch more people mm-hmm. that are obviously separated from those two. Yeah. Don't know how or why at the moment, but if it's a dueling theme, because mm-hmm. everybody's got swords, I think you kind of put a little two and two together there to think maybe they fight them. Yeah, exactly. Um, but there's definitely this sense that, 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 that Anthea and Utna are paired in some way. Yeah. 
um, uh, assisting each other in some form. Hmm. Right. Well, oh, well, that's one way to well, start. Well, hi, anyway. happy times. <laughs> Let's begin with the death of a young child's parents. Parents. Thank you, <clears throat> anime. Lord. <laughs> it's a good way to start off a happy story. Exactly. Let's call out the aggressively fairy tale style of yes. these visuals. Uh, you know, the kind of the thorny trees in the background, the uh, stony kind of parapet here that just ends in nothingness, the white horse, uh, the guy with the cape, uh, presumably guy. Uh, hard to tell in this show so far. Yeah. Um, right. But uh, yeah, very, very like. Again, is this really happening? Is this a dream? Hard to tell. It feels this... vaguely Disney-esque in yes. this respect. Yeah, uh, Sleeping Beauty. That that, and actually, the for some reason, the design of it reminds me of the BP in Kenshin every time it resets. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm. Okay. You're absolutely right. The Battle Pass animation. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, like also be that. noted, all of the other things are going on in the background are apparently supposed to be background because the prince and his horse are a shadow, a shadow. on that yeah. background. You're absolutely right. That's a yeah. great point. I didn't even notice that. Which is really, that's a really interesting wow. element to it because it's like, so he is on apparently a physical piece of structure. Yeah. But that what's behind him is like a sheet of paper. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's remarkable. Okay. And I wonder if that isn't a visual device to indicate that this is like a Kamishibai story. This is like a, right. a, a picture book. You know, interesting. Like it actually it's happened. Picture, but well, the... like you're saying, a picture picture fairy tale book. Yeah. Huh. So he is in a page of a book. So yeah. I see, yeah. Absolutely. Wow. Great eye. Yellow roses this time. Not white, not red. So that's interesting. So white's true love, red's passionate love. Mm. Yellow Rose is, pro- is I, I think, friendship. Okay, interesting. Mm. Um, Correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> I, I will I will see what I can pull up here real quick as we're looking. Um, uh, we do not need the song from Dolly Parton. <coughs> um, thank you. Uh, we're saying the Yellow Rose of Texas. <laughs> <laughs> uh, correct, friendship, um, okay. at least over here. Although, I'm not sure, is that orange? I don't know. I thought yellow roses were friendship. I'm not sure if that's co- um, that color palette. Orange. orange represents passion, desire, energy, and fascination, which would mm. also would probably key in better here. Uh, others, other thing is, I don't know what the Japanese if, Je- flower Je- language Je- means. Yeah, yeah there, there's some other meaning there. Huh? Interesting. So, so by the way, the yeah. the prince seems to have Auntie's hair, and the princess mm. seems to have Utna's hair. Right. Color. Absolutely. Um, Interesting. Yep. Confusing. So, Princess presumably is Utna as a child, I would assume. Mm. Let's find out. Well, oh. okay. Well, okay. <laughs> An age of consent child. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well. Um... Okay. Okay. Just, okay. okay. We're, we're... Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, not that creepy. Okay, good. And again, to your point, John, his shadow is on the paper of the background. Right, thank you. Yep. Fascinating. Very normal huh. thing for a person to do to a young child is yes. give them a, a parent engagement ring. <laughs> I don't recall Lupin doing this in Calgula Ostro. Mm, no. Not exactly. Yeah. Well. Roses. 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 Um, again, same thing with the background. But it's also interesting that they are like throwing the roses on top of this as if to like really heavily symbolize that meaning here. Yeah. Mm. That she loved the prince. Yeah. Okay. Well. <laughs> so I guess here we have the beginnings of the famed uh, uh, gender themes of Utena. That she decides to become a prince because she admires the prince so much. Okay. Pink roses. Pink roses. More pink roses. Dual one. Also interesting. I think 
they are literally animating those roses as they spin. Yeah. As you see, they change slightly as they move around. They're not just spinning an, an individual image, yeah. which is a very odd thing to do. Because why wouldn't you just spin them? I don't know. Yeah, it seems labor intensive. Yeah. This was directed by the same director as later seasons of Sailor Moon. <laughs> That's a very Sailor Moon facial expression right there from Wakaba. Yeah. <laughs> We're seeing a very little cartoony. bit of that. Very cartoony. Very yeah. cartoony. Uh, but it's just like for a, a frame or two. Just yeah. Like, very interesting. Now, again, we're, we're now in the real world, so to speak, or the, the world of this anime. Still very washed out, very sketchy. Yeah. To your mm -hmm. point. That's fascinating. Um, still a little almost unreal. Okay. It's interesting what they're See, doing here. Yeah, showing a sunrise like that? Yeah. Um, and the, the big grand music, the march. Yes, the, the big reveal. Yeah, of the school, which is the size of Versailles. Yeah, it's yeah. Absurdly massive. Uh, and obviously roses on kind of everything here. Huh. Um, really treating the school as a character. Mm. So that's the school. <laughs> wow. Presumably on top of a hill. Um, and so we've got... School buildings, uh, like a track, uh, you know, track and field in the back, and then the giant tree thing in the very back. Yeah, the tree arena, maybe. Yeah, yeah, maybe. The uh, overlooking a very Gerais southern Station France. <laughs> yeah, right. Overlooking a very southern France city. You're right. This city. is extraordinarily European. Um, you know, despite the. Well, that's actually an interesting point. Like, even the school looks more like... I mean, it's obviously a little bit like a Japanese high school in terms of, like, the structure and the wings. But even that feels more uh, French palace yeah. uh, inspired in terms of when the they actual... When they showed the tower and yeah. then the, the sunrise, that gave me a Santorini feeling. Okay. Where it's, like, the very azure blue water. Mm -hmm. And then... As the kids are walking across the footbridge in the very first part of their mm. going up towards the school, you see there's ruins on the side of the hill. So it feels oh, almost like this is the Acropolis. Yeah. You know what I mean? Where it's like right here, yeah. if you, when it pans up from this scene, those things you see on the upper right, they're all ruins. Mm -hmm. You're right. And it's like the more they go up, the more it's like, so is this supposed to be like, you know, the height of Greek culture? Yeah, and this is like a, you know, this is Athens. Like mm -hmm. everybody who who is up here on the top is is mm -hmm. akin to the gods. I have no idea. That's a great point. No, it, and it, but it definitely does have that feeling of almost a mythologically grand location. Yeah. You know, um, again, like Olympus. I think you're right. Fascinating. Mm. I also got to say, this feels a little like Paris, uh, with the river winding through it. You know, around yeah. the central mm -hmm. um, island that has uh, um, um, Notre Dame, Notre Dame on it. Yeah. Okay, that's absurd. Well, that's a weird perspective, bro. Yeah. 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 Well, that was just the scale of the place, right? Um, you know, you'd assume from the outside it's well, you know, four stories, whatever. But the stories themselves are like fifty feet tall. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Oh, the finest Carrera marble. <laughs> yeah, right. Wow. <laughs> All right, so here's our introduction to our main character. Um, she is full face towards us, very much a heroic pose, but also you'll notice the sort of casualness of it, how she has her um, book bag slinged over behind her, confident pose, um, but also not even looking at anybody. So... This is almost shades away from the school bully archetype, right? Yeah. Um, the one who just doesn't care about anybody. It's certainly not that, but it's interesting how... Um, and again, I don't think I've ever seen a school girl enter a school walking this way visually. Not so typically. Definitely coding yeah. her more with kind of boy archetypes than girl archetypes. Mm. Check out this expression. 
<laughs> and just the, the confidence of Utna here, hands on hips, doesn't care, um, fully, fully self-confident, this, this girl. Yes. Interesting. She's invested in that uniform. She is very sure. invested in that uniform. Well, if she's emulating the prince, she's not necessarily abandoning the fact that she's a girl. She's just emulating, you know, what what he would have worn, whatever. Exactly. Yeah. And and when you look at this, it it I gotta tell you, it, it doesn't. I mean, yes, there's the boyish thing is is supposed yeah. to be there, but it doesn't really look that unfeminine, if that right. makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. And there's certainly. <laughs> Um, and, and they're presenting it as a way of saying, well, yeah, she's a girl, and here's how we're going to prove it. Uh, yep. <laughs> uh. um, well, they've also done a few interesting things with it. Like, for example, how the shirt flares out a little bit at her waist to give the hint of a skirt. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, you know, more so than a standard boy's uniform would just be kind of a, a, you know, straight up and down. Um, so, to your point, it definitely does that. And, and obviously, somebody's been tailoring it a bit around the chest, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> there are indications of femininity that are involved in that little part bit. there. Yeah. Um, just to weave it. But also to that point, I mean, that's that's uh, those are some tight shorts. Just saying, you know. Yeah. Yeah. She biked to school this. <laughs> <laughs> Using the okay. airbud defense, watertight. Right. Mm -hmm. There's no rule against it, so gotta let me in. But I'm notice... I'm curious about why the teacher has a crop. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I do think this is a callback to, um, oh man, uh, Cutie Honey. There is a sadistic school mistress teacher in that. Mm. Uh, and I believe she does uh, carry a crop um, at times to, uh, like a switch you know, to punish right. uh, students with. Uh, but also notice, like, how over the top they're being here with her um, pose. Yes. Yes. So clearly this is used for comedy. And again, speaking of kind of gender coding here, in a lot of high school romance series, when the hot boy is introduced, what's one of the first things they, they do? Show him playing basketball. Yeah, you know, that's the, that's the trope of the the hot, uh, you know, top of the class boy. So doing this with Utna first off is an interesting move, but then also having all the flower petals around, just contrasts. Yeah, there's a lot, a lot of animation going on in just the right <laughs> yeah, out the basket. I know, right? <laughs> My goodness, indeed. Um, I also notice how they foregrounded the uh, her hand going up in the ring on it, to remind us. And again, you know, who is surrounding her? Not boys, but girls. Fascinating. Uh, it should be pointed out, uh, as we mentioned in the past, there has long been a uh, expectation in Japan that girls often go through kind of a girl crush stage at some point in like junior high or high school. So it's also kind of playing off that, I think, a little bit as well. Oh my. Oh, uh Oh, well. What was that character's name in Comey Can't Communicate? Oh, gosh. That, like, <laughs> that kept, like, you know, like, just... All, Akami? All the weird, yeah. <laughs> the, all the weird things. Yeah. Yeah. Uh. So note the implication here that she's exiting the locker room and still putting her clothes on. Um, mm. And obviously it's just the jacket, right? But that she's so comfortable and confident in her body that she's willing to wait until she's even just outside to put the jacket on. Unusual. Also, just not something you would act, you'd normally animate. You know, you choose yeah, to animate somebody right. doing that last little moment of putting the jacket on. It's kind of cool. Interesting reveal. Yeah. Very interesting reveal. Um, to see this, like, observatory out of nowhere. Two interesting things here. First off, Pink Roses. Um, also, how upbeat the music is. Yeah. Um, yes. You know, we're seeing this other character, and it's this very jolly moment in the show. Hmm. Not to be a jerk here, but, but maybe because yeah. you've smelled roses in the past, 
I'm just saying that might cause you to remember. Oh, of a clearly defining moment in your life. Yeah. Connected it, it, to a ring that has a prince you know, right there. It's right there. Yeah, kind of, kind of that thing. Probably. Also, she was just playing basketball through a hailstorm of, <laughs> of rose petals. <laughs> that could be also it. I think. Possibly. Possibly. Maybe. A few things to note. Um, <laughs> first boys. off, see what? Pretty boys. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, absolutely. I mean, these are the most Bishonen of Bishonen here. Um, uh, boy. Wonderfully quaffed locks. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Hair for miles. Um, but, again, um, kind of remarkable that a lover's quarrel where somebody is slapped, like, Utna is treating that like a really big deal. Um, you know, that, that is horrifying to Utna. So, good on you <laughs> for, for yes. that. Um, but they're also introducing the multiple characters here. So we have uh, purple-haired girl, um, green-haired guy, red-haired guy, and just the sense of this melodrama between all these characters. I love that they're doing this from a distance, so we don't know what's going on, but we get introduced to their like personalities, and so then when we actually get introduced to their characters, we'll have some sense of who they are. Um, it's just a, a, a slightly more subtle way of telling a story than, you know, Hi, I'm John. I am X. Hi, I'm Bob. I am Y. You know. I also find it interesting that Utna is wearing a male uniform. Yeah. These uniforms don't look like anything like what she's wearing. True. Also, she's not wearing the other boys' male uniform. Yeah. I mean, she's wearing... got red shorts on. These guys apparently have white pants. Right. Um, yeah. And like the other boys, are, they wear a green uniform. She's wearing black. I think yeah. somewhere they clarify that it's like the winter uniform or that like the former uniform or something, but hmm. okay. interesting. Oh my! So we go from from <laughs> slapping a young lady around, mm -hmm. not just slapping, but also backhand knuckle slapping. Yeah, and what looks like a guy is never ready to do some curb stomping on the other guy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, I mean, like, yeah, very lighthearted after that slap. You're absolutely right. Uh, some tonal whiplash here. <laughs> Should also note that being jumped on by another girl in the hallway, Utna's just, that seems common to her. <laughs> yeah. She's... No reaction whatsoever. All right, notice oh, facial okay. expression here. Um, how Seonji, green-haired guy, he's half smiling. So clearly it's not going poorly for him in this conversation. Note the expression of the girls in the back as they're going past. Uh, little, they're probably ooh, thinking, they're they're thinking the so much fanfic tonight. So much fanfic tonight. <laughs> right tonight. Well, we, we haven't seen any shifting of bodies, so presumably she's still sitting squarely on right. his butt. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's probably a little, a little weird looking. Like, it, and also, like, it took effort. Like, that was an actual animation. Like, you see their expression change as they go go past so yeah. that wasn't just some animator having fun that was intentional so he just slaps that's... her every day that's all <laughs> jeez okay well that's good no, yeah that's... Uh, wow <laughs> damn there's a, a sailor moon uh face <laughs> yeah Whew. wow okay so wakaba clearly has a thing for seoji right that has been established Oh, so much. I'm sorry, what? So much. The bride. Yeah, anybody want to talk to Andy? End of the world. She's right there. <laughs> I mean, I feel like everyone should be just doing it with, with every sentence instead of a sentence going like, <laughs> as he pleases, as, as he pleases. He pleases. <laughs> well, to that point, yeah. you know. Right, we, theater we, kids. Yeah, we've gone from this very naturalistic conversation in the hallway to this very staged conversation here. Um, yeah. Extraordinarily stylized, down to the dialogue, down to what's going on. Um, the organ music. Yeah, everyone's stances, you know, back ramrod straight. Interesting. The stark contrasting coloration going yeah. on here. <laughs> The will of end of the world, whatever the heck that means. End of the world. Must be midterms. 
<laughs> it's just midterms, right? That's the end of the world, right? Usually yeah. was for me. Let's be honest. Clearly playing off the idea of possessiveness here, right? That mm. um, Not the most healthy of relationships. No, plus she looks like she's two feet tall or either he's eight feet tall. I can't really decide which is which. Yeah. Um, I do think it's, uh, to, to be actually honest, I do think it's a bit of both. The Sanji is quite tall and she is short, but. Mm. Yeah, it it also just emphasizes the creepiness with that height. Look difference. at the size of his hand as it's animated. Yeah, you're right. Oof. He has got like giant hands. Mm -hmm. Th that's his slapping hand. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Tells me to too. watch for. Um, good question. The minutes between slapping Anthony. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God! What's going on? Okay. Uh, okay, we're getting somewhere. Yeah. All right. So, so now we're understanding that uh, there are duels over the Rose Bride. Whoever wins the duel gets possession of Anthe. Mm. Hi. That's like a disturbing thing to say, Hi. but yes. <laughs> Welcome to your school, and you're gonna have uh, you're gonna go to these classes. Da, 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 and, oh, and by the way, you're the bride. Oh, does that mean something good? <laughs> No. No. <laughs> no, not really. no, not at all, actually. <laughs> but someone's got to lose out, and honey, it's you. Yeah. Um, so the question is, is this a student council thing? Um, is this an end of the world thing? <coughs> right. Um, who set up the whole Rose Bride? What is her role in all this? Hmm. I guess we'll find out. The weird, like, do, 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 do music. <laughs> like, yeah. Yes. What's happening? <laughs> Very upbeat. Also, speaking of Rosa Versailles, you have um, La Filette Revolutionnaire yep. here, so a little bit of French. And interestingly, they change it here. So yeah. they add Utena for the other half of the eye catch. Huh? Wonder why. Wow. No, it's because you smell of onions. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> They have a unique relationship. Yeah. Small observation. Yeah. I don't know whether it's purposeful. Mm. There's no other noise. Good point. We had leading up to this, the sort of stark black silhouette, blue background, the mm -hmm. arches, and there was some chatter. Yeah. Guy starts reading the letter. There's no other noise. Mm -hmm. There's only him speaking, and there's only Utna who responds. Mm -hmm. And there's just the <laughs> of tearing off yeah. the, the paper. All the crowd noise is gone. You're absolutely right. So is that, does that feel like we don't need the crowd noise, we're just really focused on this dialogue, or is are we supposed to be zoomed in? So basically we've, we yeah. ourselves as the sort of omniscient viewer have like come through the crowd yep. to hear the exact conversation that's pinpointed in this moment. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's that. I think they're deliberately focusing us, us on mm -hmm. that, that moment. Mm. Oh, man. Oh. Can I just say how powerful that drawing is? Yeah. Like that facial expression. Because she's not, you know, it's not overstated. Uh, right. It's just the absolute shock and then the tear coming down. That's a punch in the gut, man. Wow. Just the ever so slight head tilt that, yeah, you know, like I can't believe that they're reading my letter. Mm -hmm. uh, Oof. And note here when Utna comes out, second, as she's running, she stumbles a little bit and then starts running. Uh, kind of the mm. maybe might be like the Miyazaki stumble where it shows your humanity. Um, that says right. that you're, you know, you're a little, little off your game. I also want to call out the difficulty of animating this and how much you can get across. Um, and, and again, they're not overstating Wakaba's facial expression here. Uh, she's obviously crushed. Um, but note how in the back they make sure to draw uh, Utna's eyebrows and to mm. show us that. Um, concern, yeah. concern, yeah, exactly. In that, um, not much else of Utna you can see, but like that much is important to show us, man. And check out Utna's facial expression there. 
<laughs> she yeah. Is not... Eat. See what? I said, no, yeah, I see. Yeah. It's yeah. Just a knitted brow, if you will. Yeah, she is not having this. <laughs> There's a visual. Okay. <laughs> yeah, no joke. Wow. And the gong, you know. Yeah. I, I think we know what he means. Wow. The forest of doom. Yes, mm -hmm. exactly that one. Forest of unpleasant things. <laughs> Do not go there. Okay. That's a very interesting way to get that across. It sure is. Shadow like puppets. Like Balinese shadow puppets, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, and you can see just down to their legs. Um, but there's also like a background around them, right? Like the yeah. another shadow on either side to give it a you know, further sense of them being in an environment. Fascinating. All right, that's creepy. Yeah. Uh, I was thinking of The Shining. Come play with us. <laughs> There's definitely Whoa. a sense of that, actually. That's a that's a that's a good connection, actually. Um, let me see if I can get back to that real quick. Bubble, bubble, toil and trouble. Yeah. Um, it is interesting to ask, like, what point that has for the story, because it starts by just recapitulating what we already know, but then builds into their rules in the forest. So it's kind of building dread. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, but also just giving us a little more information. But also, <clears throat> what is this? Yeah. Like, are these actual characters? Is somebody doing this? What's going on? Well, even when they're sort of gesticulating, yeah, it never changes. The line that comes from stage right mm -hmm. never changes. So when she's flexing. It's just one line to her feet that yep. then her whole form flexes. Mm -hmm. So it's like, that's not obviously people. So no. what the hell is it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fascinating. Wow. And, and again, just the scale of um, everything here. Yeah. Uh, and the, the, the crazy visuals. We have a, a bird eagle type creature, um, roses on either side, and some kind of swirling design in the center. Interesting. <coughs> it's a hydro element symbol. Yeah. <laughs> Great. How am I supposed to get in here? So like that Utena's uh, reaction isn't the beep. Oh, oh. You know I mean? Yeah. <laughs> it's yes, just, how oh, do I get in? How do I get inside this thing? Okay, the Angel's ring. Egg. Yeah. yeah. Right. Wow. Okay. So these just... I can't even begin to imagine how this works with physics. And I wonder if that's kind of the point, is it's meant to be magical. Mm. Right. You know, just th this this is not physically possible. There, there's some magic spell happening here in some way. Yeah, she's not just putting the ring to the door mm -hmm. and it unlocks, you know, it's, yeah. it's inset, unlock something. It's like, no, there's something otherworldly happening. Absolutely. So just want to call out what they're doing here. Um, uh, this is a... Uh, I'm not. Sh it, I'm trying to s tell. It's kind of interesting. Um, you'd think because this is the same thing on both sides, they're just mirroring it, right? But they're not. If you look closely, for example, at the the yeah. two blue columns in the center, that's a different shine on the left and the right. So somebody's literally animating this entire thing, going back and forth in all this water. They're not just mirroring the left and the right. Wow. Crazy. So here's the thing. Huh. <laughs> I can't think of any anime that has ever had a visual like that. You know, water crossing the... the um... Excuse Bless me. Bless you. Bless you. Thank you again. Um, edit that out, Brent. Um, <laughs> the water crossing, the... All of the, like giant things moving in the mist and then this everything apparently reforming into this rose statue that's original straight up original yeah okay i i do have what? to point out this has become <laughs> yes it, it is absolutely that um this has become an iconic shot in anime um and you will yeah. see this multiple times of somebody walking up this kind of eternally curving staircase uh, we've seen it before. I, I do believe this is where that comes from. Okay. That animation. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So that's the castle from the opening credits. 
Yep. Um, on top of this giant spiral staircase. Again, it's, I'm I'm blown away by how uh, symbolic isn't the word. Um, unreal. All of this is. Yeah. But but in a way that still feels relatable. I don't know how to. It's it's very interesting. Um, like none of this should exist, but yeah. it does. Huh. Well, and just beyond you know, just technical skill in doing this. Yeah. Her yeah. walking up when you're, you know, when you're, not only is she going up the stairwell, but that moment right before this, as you see all the sort of, yes, that part is just rolling yes. by her, and it's like, yep, how much time did you spend <laughs> on this? Yeah, it's you know, it, yeah. It, go ahead, go ahead. Now, I was gonna say, yeah, it's incredibly hard to draw, especially like physical objects like that moving in that ballistic space where there's this, you know. The, all of the perspective of that. Oh my gosh, I can't imagine. And again, this and I, is. You know, it, yeah, I was going to say, um, you, you don't have a computer model that you're animating on top of either at this point. Yeah. Well, and I think just the technical skill to it adds yeah. to that otherworldliness mm -hmm. of it. Mm -hmm. So it's just like, it's visually like, holy, what the. And, you know, that really sort of it, it discombobulates your sense of being like, oh, I'm just, she's walking upstairs. That's a great. Like, no, 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 this is. This is much more. They're trying to convey to you. This is a hell of a lot more than just I gotta go upstairs and do the thing. <laughs> like, yeah. To that point, we haven't had much in the way of detailed character animation yet. Mm. Um, some careful facial animation, but not you know the, the fluid shonen kind of action animation. They're pouring all of it into the otherworldliness of this architecture. Yeah. And having that all spin, that's fascinating. Okay, so going even further on the, you know, how does that stand? <laughs> right. Like, there's just no way for that to actually, just the unreality of it is really striking. And are you reading the lyrics yeah. of this song? <laughs> <I know>. Yes. <laughs> <clears throat> the darkness of Sodom, the darkness of light. Light. What? Yeah. <laughs> and talking earlier about baptismal records and death records. death records yeah. and it's like uh, okay well when you when you said angel's egg again like this could have just been lifted out of angel's egg yeah i know right just the weird kind of coloration of it just the odd shapes and mm -hmm. organic semi not organic kind of look it's like yeah. wow yeah this could be very much of a piece of that you know giant statue thing at the beginning and end you know, yeah. Uh, absolutely. And actually, to that point, like, think of the, the, the tone of this musical piece. It's like a dirge. You know, yeah. it, it's very religious, very solemn, very like, like, like a march. Um, again, not the kind of thing you'd, you'd expect for walking into a duel or whatever. Just so dramatic. Apocalyptic oh. darkness. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and that's Damn. CGI. Like that's the definitely a CGI apple. model that they're spinning there. Wow. Okay. Wow. Um, and that's impressive considering the. Uh, so they're doing something smart here. I'm realizing, um, it's basically black with lighted elements. So they don't have to have color shading and have the lighted elements mm -hmm. actually do all that on a, on a CGI model. So uh, the the lighting can be fairly straightforward where it's almost it's a flat coloring and everything except for the, the, the glowiness on the towers. Yeah. Interesting. Well, also that blackness adds to hiding where the CGI integrates with the actual drawing. Yeah. yeah so yeah. it's like you can't see like a hard edge where it's like, oh, there's a platform and then this yeah. weird object floating exactly. around it. It's like, no, it's kind of all... I can't tell that it's CGI very well because I can't see any definitive lines yep. where it's blocked right. into, the, into the shot. Exactly. Fascinating. And also, again, think of scale. Um, you know, look at how tiny that staircase is compared to the castle. How big must yeah. the castle be? Wow. You know, you can she's having a really good reasoned, re you know, <laughs> yeah. reaction to yeah. all this. True. <laughs> You're absolutely right. You know that's surprising. 
Okay. Oh, look at that. I, I wonder how that's working. How about all the rest of the stuff you just went through? Yeah, right. All the singing, all the not being in a forest? Because, you know, you're in I a mean, dome you, thing. You, How's this all work? A mm -hmm. few minutes ago, you were in a forest. Spatially speaking, this is like a freaking Dardis. You should be very confused right. by now. <laughs> yeah, where exactly are the trees? Yeah. <laughs> how are you, like... A thousand feet up in the air with a floating castle. <laughs> and not winded. Mm hmm Yeah, Utna's durable, psychologically, Clearly. obviously. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> wow. All right, so here she is in that outfit from the opening. Um, I guess as Rose Bride in the duel. And she's wearing his green rose. True, so presumably point. she belongs to Sionji. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, what? what okay. The, why? <laughs> God, here's a cup of tea. Slap. Hey, like, can I Good can morning, I hold your slap. book bag for you? Slap. What the hell's wrong with this guy? Sionji does not seem like the the, the nicest guy in the world. Yeah, no, he doesn't understand. He used to use his words. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, use your words to humiliate and debase your bride. Wait, no, that's not. Wait, no, 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 that's not what. What's better than hitting her if you're gonna have to do mm -hmm. it? You know, like come on. Gosh. You know, oh, you... if you're slapping your girl around, of course she's gonna say good luck to somebody else in the <laughs> hopes that she curb stomps you. <laughs> she wants to get away from you, dude. That's why she's wishing her luck. <laughs> mm -hmm. Jeez. Which opens some interesting questions, like. How much is Anthe under some sort of influence, magic, spell, control to make her the Rose Bride? How much uh, free will does she have? Um, right. I, I don't know the answer to that, but clearly there's some. Hmm. Yeah, I was going to say, that's interesting. I hadn't considered that before. It's like, how? why would you... If you were, if you were possessed of your own free will, mm -hmm. why would you put up with that kind of treatment? Yeah. Why would you not stand up and be like, you know what, screw it. Right. I'm not going to be this Rose Bride anymore. Find somebody else. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good question. It's a really good question. Mm. And again, just like the power of that facial expression. Just yeah. staring right at the viewer, full of confidence, full of, of strength. Oh, my. <laughs> I'll finally be free. Thank you. That certainly appears to be the thing. But also this shock. Um, it's kind of surprising from Anthe at this point. Uh, she's seen, um, I guess she hasn't seen Utna. Really. Right. To that well, well maybe, 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 maybe that, that place where she grows the roses, I mean, that's like, maybe, I don't know, I'm being reaching here, but maybe a, a metaphor for the gilded cage. I don't know. Right. Yeah. No. I thought that too. Yeah. yeah I think you're absolutely right. But no, now that I think about it, this is the first time Anthe meets Utna. Right. Yeah. You know, I saw Anthe from a distance, and then um, Anthe's taken to the student council, and then Utna meets Sionji without Anthe being there. Yeah. So I guess it would make sense that Utna shows up. Anthe fi figures Utna's just going to walk, right, when she realizes what's going on here. But the fact that Utna uh, commits, I guess, is what's impressing Anthe. Hmm. Yeah, that's what I was. I her expression is more to, to me as a matter of shock that Udna didn't just turn around and go nuts to this and also walk, you know, walk yeah. out. Mm -hmm. Anthony's so, kind of surprised that somebody will stand up to say on Yeah. Also note the spaceship sound. Yeah. Like there's this constant going on. I don't know if that's meant to be like wind or not, but mm. interesting. Interesting that this is literally pulling Utna in. Like, she's yeah. having to resist getting sucked into this this spot. Fascinating. Okay. Shogun? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, so this is the famous, if you've ever heard of Utna, ever seen Utna, you've probably seen some version of this image of the sword coming out of Anthe's chest. Okay, interesting. So it is a feature of the duel and presumably of whoever you know owns the Rose Bride is getting the sword with the rose hilt. Hmm. Wow. God, this could not be more Oshi if they tried. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Talk about melodrama. Man. 
as the bells of Notre Dame go wild. <laughs> <laughs> the bells of Notre Dame. You're also fighting her, and she's got a kendo sword, and you've got a blade. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yep. Um, and it's also call out the, the you know, gender essentialism of the statement, right? That, that he's you know, he's putting her down for her gender. A few things to call out here. Um, Utena knows that it's knocking off the rose that's the, the that ends the duel. So she assumes this is a trick sword of some kind, but also that it's just, you know, you don't need to be sharp to knock off the rose. So, uh, you know, wooden kendo sword is perfectly fine for doing that. Um, so she assumes she's going up against basically a plastic sword, um, but she is not. <laughs> yeah. No. So is this tuxedo mask? Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Well, it's a distinctly um, interesting mentor-ish kind of grow up, get your strength, get your nobility. Okay. Yeah. Filling a similar role. Yeah. He's definitely not there to help her physically. Mm -hmm. It's all about supporting her psychologically. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. Samurai Clash. Yep. Right. Very, Very classic anime thing. Nice. Got to got to hey. applaud that move. We hmm. called out the bells toll at the beginning and end of every fight. This Anthony is... seems very very happy. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Anthony's fine with that. Opera oh. glasses. <laughs> sure. Oh. That's oh yes, not, baby. That's, that's an creepy. interesting way to stop on. <laughs> okay, so I have to tell a story about this. Um, this is Crispin Freeman doing this line. Uh, when he was dubbing this, he saw that line in the script, and he was like, come on, guys. Like, you know, we can translate better than that. So they said, okay, they rewound the dialogue, play the Japanese dialogue. Oh, yeah, baby. Okay, <laughs> all right. That's literally what the original Japanese voice actor says. Gotcha. <laughs> all right. Utna, you are so right. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> This has truly been one weird day. Oh, boy. Mm. I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> Someone just said, hi, I belong to you. I'm the Rose Pride. I'd be like, uh, yeah. Let me right. take you to the hospital. Did someone hit you on the head? Too many slaps to the face, I think. And to that point, like, she is, like, just coming out and saying it. Um, yeah. And it's kind of fascinating that she gets this chance for freedom, so to speak. And she's like, nope, I belong to you. Also, Udna's saying, this has been such a weird day. We didn't descend the staircase. True. We didn't have, like, a, yeah. you beat me, now here's the sword. Mm-hmm. The bells ring. Udna's just walking through, like, the campus courtyard, and Auntie yeah. steps out from some. Did you, did, did anybody, any explanation here, exposition, <laughs> something? <laughs> I'm yours. I am the Rose Bride. That really does not answer what the hell just happened. No, not at all. <laughs> yeah. Well, I should hope so, because I have so many questions. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if we get anything more here. Is this Nihon Genesis? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> What's with this ending music as well? I mean, they made the same year, so... Yeah. Hey, uh-huh. um, interesting here that Utna is wearing girls' clothes. You know, very feminine yep. um, outfit there. What does that even mean? Indeed. Anthe is there with the same guy. Uh, is she clutching his back, or is she is Utna out of the scene and she's hugging him uh, face to face and we're seeing yeah. his left shoulder? Hard to say. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. So we've got a rivalry of some kind here. Um, huh. Yeah, exactly the same guy. Yeah. Hmm... All right, that was episode one of Utna. I should point out, I misspoke. Um, this came out two years after Evangelion. Okay. Okay. So, oh, okay. Yeah. A uh, little bit after Eva. Uh, but that's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it was. I mean, Strawberry Panic wasn't this confusing. <laughs> it was pretty straightforward in the first episode, quite frankly. Well, I'm increasingly wondering 
how much this is real, how much it's just like fairy tale logic. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Or are we going to have kind of like a snow globe ending? Right. All of this, right? Oh, you know. Yeah. Rosebud. Oh, Rose no. Hey, roses. Rose. Uh, rose bride. Yeah. Rose bride. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, wh who exactly is this aimed at? Mm hmm. Um. You know what I mean? Because I. Yeah. The the sword play the. Hardly even. It's not casual sexism. It is just blatant <laughs> sexism. <laughs> you can't fight me. You're a girl. Hey, you, mm -hmm. Anthony, slap. You know. Mm -hmm. I, 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 who, am, who's the, the target audience for this? I mean, I the think... fighty part seems like boys, but it's. Mm -hmm. I would feel like it should be girls being empowered to challenge guys. I think it's the exact it's same just... target audience as Rosa Versailles, because it's the exact yeah. same things happening. It's sword duels. All that kind of stuff. Um, girl dressing up as guy, you know, it's same Oscar. kind of idea yeah. to Oscar. Um, it's girls who are especially concerned with their place in the world, right? How are men going to treat me? How can I have agency in the world? Okay. Or it's just for theater kids. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that too. That too. Well, I mean, because it is. You know, if you're talking about Usagi being dumb, mm -hmm. but still, you know, finding her um, place and position and power yeah. by becoming a magical girl. Right. It's like, Utna is already sort of self-possessed of, kind of, of power. Yeah, she's already there. Yeah. And it's just like, okay, so are you, you know what I mean? It's like, you're not giving into a magical kind of transformation gives you the power that you don't have mm -hmm. you already have somebody who has that power so is are you still leaning in that same direction be like okay no there's no magic really mm. it's somebody who is possessed of a dream a drive and a desire yeah and look at her actuate on that yeah and it's like okay i think you're absolutely right that really utna is the role model you know for how to behave in the situation not this situation, but in general, you know, be self-confident, be the change you want to see in the world, etc. Right. Um, um, and so we can you know, we can start there and then see. I mean, the question, the, the larger question is, is this going to be about how much that butts heads with the rest of the world and how hard it is to actually do that? You know, what do you kind of feels like it? Because you, I mean, the student council is obviously not there to help her no you know what i mean it's like we don't we don't have any hard lines yet other than sayonji is on the student council so mm -hmm. nobody else has stepped in and done anything but you uh, kind of get the gist of where that's going where it's like mm -hmm. oh you know if you would challenge the student council preview you know you'll die like right. uh, oh yeah so they're not on her side so what happens when a young uh empowered woman mm -hmm. encounters an institutional body right that treats her you can't be strong you can't fight me you're a girl mm -hmm. yep mm. um okay. complicated by the fact that there is a girl on the student council girl on the student council yeah uh so we know that's that's going to be a thing um although she also um again is more male coded right so she's right. You know, back straight just like the other guys um, a lot like Oscar, actually. Um, it's even like in the character design. Um, but I, I think you're absolutely right that this is kind of what happens when that attitude meets institutional power. Yeah. Her teacher with the crop. You can't mm -hmm. dress like a boy. Mm -hmm. Like, uh huh. Exactly. Um, the other question is what is kind of the, the larger symbolism here in terms of. Um, Things like the so this is sort of a magical girl show, in the sense that she there's a transformation sequence. Uh, she fights in this, you know, alternate reality zone, um, and she does so to right a wrong in some way. She has a special power that's been sort of given to her. So a lot of those elements are there. But it's, it's like your point, John. It's not that. Like it's it's not the same yeah. 
goal. I want to know what the principal thinks of all this. Mm. Oh yeah, the forest. That's where all the you know they do the dueling things <laughs> and the bride that the, you know, the poor girl that gets yeah. getting slapped around for some reason. I have no agency in any of this, so <laughs> don't go in the forest. That's the best I can do. You yeah, know? I mean it's like we're because <clears throat> you know the teacher clearly doesn't really know anything about that. I guess. Yeah. But, you know, that forced is there, that weird construct is there. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like people can, clearly people have gone up in there going, oh, tug on the door, nothing's happening. Oh, well, you know, it, it's just kind of just like. Well, and these students are told not to go there. Right. Yeah. So yeah. clearly so there's forbid... some institutional. Yeah. So are they well, just doing peyote and just walking into the forest and pretending they're having fights? I mean, it's it's literally just kind of like one of those things is like, to your point is, is how much of this is actually a metaphor and how much of this is actually going on. Yeah. And you know. here's the thing, it's it ninety seven. Putin yeah. is ninety seven. Is this an early deconstruction of magical girls? I think so. Yes, absolutely. You know what I mean? Because it, it yeah. feels like we're not that far away from Usagi. But it just right. time wise yeah. doesn't uh, feel like years. it's all that far. I think. Um so it's just to me it would like I, I expect the deconstructed Madoka now yeah. because we've had like a lot of time of magical girl kind of build up where you say well no now we yeah. need a fresh wind we, right. we should deconstruct mm -hmm. magical girl thing but yep. Utna feels like it's a it, it's kind of deconstructing what what parts of a magical girl are are the quintessential elements the yeah. strength the self-determination the drive and the goal yeah, but it just feels like it's so early to be doing a deconstruction. <laughs> well, uh, you say that, but you know, Sally Village was '66. Yeah, yeah right. Fair enough. Fair it had enough. been around for a long time, so it also could be that with the success of Sailor Moon, there's now a boom, right? And mm -hmm. there's now this that you know, Magical Girl is back in a sense in terms of being it never left, but it's now super popular. So maybe right. it's more that now everyone's talking about it. It's time for deconstruction. Well, sort of like the the isekai trend. Now that we've sort of you know we've maxed that out over the last mm -hmm. several years, and that there's been a lot of very interesting sort of deconstructed isekai kind of stuff going on, mm -hmm. where it's like okay, now you're you you've seen where the mainstream's going, and people have sort of shunted off from that to be like, wait a minute, there's so much more that we can actually do. <clears throat> mm -hmm. So I could see Utna being that kind of response of like, you know, there's so much more that we can draw out of this than just, you know, magical dancing and throw your headband at something. Right. <laughs> yeah. And it should be pointed out, and I'm going to um, uh, double check something here real quick because I want to be um, absolutely uh, correct. Um, so um, basically... So the director of this, Ikuhara, uh, he directed a bunch of Sailor Moon. He was series director starting in the second season, like partway through the second season. Continued through that, did their, the, the first theatrical movie, and then when he was annoyed that he couldn't have more creative control over Sailor Moon, he left Toy after the fourth season to make Utna. Mm. So this was his very okay. next thing after making Sailor Moon. Um, which tells us again, this is kind of a, you know, his reaction to that show in some ways. Mm. Um, yeah. Interesting. Because a lot of the the, a lot of stuff we saw with Usagi, where she is fighting, uh, was it Naru's mom? who yeah. was the actual demon lady right. mm -hmm. those psycho you know psychedelic sort of background colors yeah. of the store mm -hmm. um the sort of headspace where monster lady it's purples and dark blacks mm -hmm. and kind of things that are in the background it's like you know a lot of that weird space kind of stuff kind of mm -hmm. happens in utna as well where True, it's like right. you've got this weird sort of nether space in a lot of the shots that's going on so it's like Okay. Yeah. I could see some influential elements. Um, and, you know, obviously, and that's one of the hot problems is I have not seen any of Sailor Moon during Ikuhara's reign, right? Right. So I don't know how much of that he pulled forward. Uh, who knows? Hard to say. 
uh, without actually well, seeing just, it. Well, just 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 the ideas of you know, like you can have these sort of backspaces that aren't just cheap cuts. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That they might be more significant because Utna mm-hmm. plays them to be much more significantly involved in yeah. what's going on, mm-hmm. and I don't think it's accidental that it does Ooh. in uh, Sailor Moon. Mm-hmm. You know, looking at it more, it's like you know maybe those backgrounds do have more influence. Right. It's like okay. I'm pretty sure nothing in this show is accidental. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um. It's also remarkable to me how you can have a sh- uh, first episode with so much weirdness in it that still has dramatic drive and power. Like, at yeah. no point watching this am I like, I'm bored or I'm so confused I don't want to watch anymore. Um, like, I'm, I, I was pulled through the entire time, even though I'm, I'm the entire time I'm going, <laughs> right? <laughs> What? Huh? <laughs> well, and that's again, you know, talking about target audience. Yeah. I'll I'll be honest. I can only watch this because we have watched so much other stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If I yeah. was 12, a guy, you know, 12 <laughs> on the farm watching TV and no. Utna came on, mm-hmm. I would have a really hard time wrapping my head around this mm-hmm. to be like, okay, you know, I understand, you know, characters i understand how story works i understand yep. plot I- ideas but this is just freaking weird mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah so it's like that's what's so interesting to see how you how you marketed this what kind of merchandising were you getting out yeah. of this and you how wonder how this pay for itself <laughs> yeah um lots of fake swords coming out of chests Apparently. um but yet yeah, you also wonder how much like including those magical girl elements made it comprehensible to the tween girl audience or young teen girl audience is going for where that symbolism is like oh i i get that i that's my lead in to the show so however odd other things are i think it also benefits from the fact that shoujo manga typically is more abstract visually you know you have mm-hmm. more empty backgrounds more just you know as soon as characters start talking it's kind of just talking heads if you will uh it's not as grounded in like the physical world because it's much much more about emotions i think that also carries forward to utina more uh where it can be more visually um symbolic um uh in that way hard to say it's It's something all right yep (laughs) it's a thing Mm -hmm. it's a thing yeah it's anime it's a thing I like the way they got the with this one shot. They've got this curvature, yeah, that they managed to get out of the swirling cloud. Yeah, yeah. I'm guessing. <laughs> what is going on? Um, yeah, it's a uh, it's a fascinating show. And are we are the prince is the same? Yep. So Utna, when she encounters the prince, is a little girl. Yeah. And the prince is an adult. Mm-hmm. Utna is now an adult woman. Well, she's uh, High so. Uh, uh, actually, to that point, um, uh, one of the lines that uh, Toga says there is, he thinks she's in middle school. So um, she is like last year of middle school, is I believe. Okay, the, so the how old do we think she is when she's first encountered? Good question. I mean, she she says she was a little girl and she barely remembers it. So I'm assuming she was five or six. Okay, so it could be like ten years later, maybe. No, I mean that, no, uh, like less than that, maybe yeah. eight years later. Yeah. So the prince would necessarily look notably older. Older. Mm-hmm. Necessarily. Um, I am scrolling through the Wikipedia article to see if there is a specific thing. Um, I see nothing in the Wikipedia article indicating her age. So hard to say. Yeah, um, I will say she certainly she certainly looks more like she's in high school. I mean, she is like the same height as the boys, all that kind yeah. of stuff. So um, I I don't know if that's misleading or not. Uh, the the middle school thing, or if that's a sort of, sort of an insult to her. Oh, right. she's probably just middle school. <laughs> that that like, could yeah. very well be. Um, 
What do you get, what do you think of Toga at this point, the red haired dude? Yes, baby. Uh, <laughs> uh, I I he's not. I I think he's a future villain or or um possibly rival. Uh for for maybe not so much anthem or anthem and anti. <laughs> um I I think well actually let me amend that. I think that he is actually more interested in Utna than he is in the Anthony. I think he probably doesn't really care about being having a bride, so to speak. And I think that he maybe is looking at Utna as like a bride for him. Mm-hmm. You know, something that he is more interested in. Yeah. So, you know, maybe the rivalry will become become uh Anthony and him. Yeah, it's it's interesting because to that point <laughs> Um, uh, he's definitely visually coded more as a villain. Um, yeah. It was like how he stands, like, the, you know, the, 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 the constant smile, the constant smirk, you know, the, the big eyebrows and yeah. so forth. Um, but all we've seen of him so far is him stopping Sayonji from slapping Anthe more and then reprimanding Sayonji in the student council meeting and then, you know, watching the duel from a distance. So he hasn't done anything, like, specifically villainous yet, uh, which is remarkable for his, his sort of character design and w- what you'd think. So. Yes, yeah, it's, it's hard to get a read on him. He feels mm-hmm. sort of like... Uh, lawful evil? Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> where you no know, slapping the rose bride, that's going mm-hmm. too far. Yeah. But he's not stopping anything else going on. So when mm-hmm. Sayonji like grabs Anthe by the waist and hauls her off, it's not like he does anything about it. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like just don't slap her. I can do what I want. Okay, I've done my job. I told you exactly what the code is. Mm-hmm. You don't slap her. Yep. Now it's out of my hands. You know, it's like so it feels definitely like he's more calculating. Yeah, true. And as as a villain, this observation of Utna is not just curiosity, but it also feels slightly menacing. You know, like he's he's observing her skills, and mm. thus when his turn comes, he'll be able to challenge her and know what her moves are. Yeah, great point. You know. We don't know. Maybe he's the nicest guy on the student council. Possible. Possible. He only slaps Anthe every other month. (laughs) What a great guy. Exactly. Um, uh, Any final thoughts on this episode? Kind of wrapping up thoughts. Steve, you've been kind of quiet. I'm so (laughs) confused. (laughs) I'm so confused. No, um, I mean, no, I'm, I'm, I'm yeah, that's fair. <laughs> so, so I, you know, it's one of those things where it's actually, I'm not really confused per se as to what's yeah. going on. I'm just confused as, at its existence, <laughs> um, uh, uh, as an anime. Um, uh, I'm not saying it's bad. I yeah. just, I'm just it's trying to wrap my head confusion. around. Uh, right. Exactly. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's like okay we have a thing and we're we're pondering it we're thinking about it, that's what it's supposed to do yeah um and you know I I am willing to go to you know of course obviously the next couple episodes to see where else we go with this I th- I think part of the problem for me right now is that how many episodes is this uh, I think forty okay see so yeah, that makes a little bit more sense okay. Yeah. So I'm a little bit, uh, for me, I'm kind of like, okay, maybe you don't need to tell me everything in the first episode, right? Yeah. But, you know, just a smidge more, please. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just so that I could, because you made a good point, John, about like going, you know, back in the day, if I had watched this episode, I would have been like, okay, that was a thing. Um, moving right along to Dominion Tank Police. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, right, you know. Um because that's what it was uh, that's what it would have been uh, um you know the the so i'm just kind of curious to see how much more are we going to have more confusion or we have more explanation are we going to have the actual story because mm-hmm. that's the other part of this first episode is that there's no story for me mm. we have ideas and concepts in, in play yeah what's the story 
Yep. Mm. That's a great so point. So we haven't gotten the story. We haven't gotten the story yet. So that's kind of what I'm waiting for. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Um, you'll have a while to wait. Um, is all <laughs> oh, I will geez. say. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. um, gotcha. And I, I um, again, not to get into spoilers, but I, I will say this is a show that keeps its cards close to its chest. Um, gotcha. And right. as as time goes on, you get a little bit more, a little bit more. It's a little like Evangelion in that sense, where it's like you don't get a lot of of the larger scope of the of what's really going on until later on, um, which I think is one of his weaknesses. Um, Utna can feel very pretentious. That could be easily seen. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. That, that, that's, um, that's an interpretation, certainly. It, but yeah. I mean, even for episode one of weirdness, it. There is, uh, again, for a more mature viewer, it there's so much that's just interesting why mm -hmm. that any of it is the way that it is, that it, you know, it, it begs further investigation. Yeah. Um, it, also, things like the staircase thing, and we talked about this, Brent, where Bake Monogatari has a giant grand staircase kind of moment. And so it's like there are pieces of Utna that are sprinkled around into other things. Yep. And it's like, so it obviously struck a chord somewhere Yeah. for some of its visual some thematic elements that it's like, okay, so obviously this bears a little more investigation to figure out why. <laughs> yeah. Gundam Witch from Mercury. Right. Almost its entirety <laughs> is, is Udna. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, ow. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, certainly influential. You're absolutely right. Yeah. 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 Um, so I think it, it like you say, it, it, it bears um, overcoming that initial reaction of, were they just all high? <laughs> yes. Yeah. You know, uh, it definitely feels like that sometimes. You're just like, Okay, sure. <laughs> just they're not actually roses. It's peyote. Oh, <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> Makes total sense now. Cool. Uh, all right, then we will we will see what we feel when we watch episode two of Udna uh, in another time. Welcome back. I hope you found that useful. Good news on the front with Victor. We sat down and talked about it and he was willing to change things up a little bit. I offered him free access to the tower. Anytime he comes by and wants to watch anime, he can sit himself down in front of a screen and watch whatever anime he wants gratis. And uh, that seemed to be enough for him. So uh, yeah, I've got some seeds now, a uh, little the worse for wear, but you know, what can you do? And yeah, I think I'm gonna plant a garden. So sometimes you just have to find a third way between the various options you have. Anyway, that's it for this time. Thank you for watching, and until next time, watch more anime. <laughs>